So yeah, so thanks for joining. Today we're going to be exploring or talking about the Enterprise Hub. It's an area that I am personally very excited about. So why am I excited? Well, I've always been excited about um, enterprise initiatives and business. I think from as long as I can maybe think. Well, I've always been interested in like creating things. I've always been fascinated by the whole idea of something coming from your mind and then being something that is producing or even producing income or creating things. Like everything you see starts it off in somebody's mind. <laughs> and I find that simple concept very fascinating. Uh, one of the things that got me excited um, about business in the early days, there was a business I was trying to kick off um, around college times, which was basically just customizing people's portraits, like designs and stuff. And so when I was in university, I, start, I started customizing people's t-shirts. And um, I gave it to some popular guys that were going to a party type thing, like positioned it in that space. And before I knew it, lots of people were requesting for this product that I had uh, created. And so, you know, in uni, you can be low on funds and cash and you have uh, bills to pay and all this kind of stuff. Well, I was so excited when, like, you know, when you're just holding so much cash in your hand, <laughs> that really excited me that I was producing this thing and our cash was flowing from uh, my production. Uh, you know, around that time, if you came to my uh, my room, my uh, like my house, my uni space, you see all kinds of cereals, man. You see uh, honey, nuts, you see uh, Cheerios, you have Weetabix, you know, I had the I had the, the whole shebang. So it really helped to pay off my, my uni bills. But really what it did is that it sparked my innovation. It really got me thinking about business and enterprise. And, um, and even shortly after university, I went to the School of Social Entrepreneurship. Um, and I have been involved in, in quite a few uh, enterprises of that nature, like uh, taking young people to different places or starting up a charity here or starting up this and that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another thing is also, um, I also work as a lead designer. So I've worked with some, some of the world's like biggest brands and whatnot. So I've been in this kind of space uh, of entrepreneurship and um so yeah it's something and if you've spoken to me you might know that it's one of just it's just an area that i kind of am generally quite excited about but um yeah so just before we we get into the enterprise hub just a a, a reminder about um the different spaces that we're building and what this is about right um so really, I think the thing I want to emphasize is that these new spaces that we're building, when we talk about the Civic Center, we talk about the, the Civitas, the Academy, um, and now the Enterprise Hub, these are really spaces that are about cultivating maturity, um, allowing our potential to be fully manifested. In short, it's really about the new man, right? Not the old man. The old man that was full of issues, that uh, uh, lacking self-belief, um, the old man that was uh, uh, corrupt, um, lazy, all of that is the old man. And we're trying to put all of that to one side, right? And we're creating these spaces in keeping with the way the Lord is directing us and so that we can also manifest the fullness of citizenship in Christ. So let me move forward. So uh, this presentation should not take too long so we'll have some space for questions so if you do have questions just uh maybe make a note of it and then towards the end i can maybe capture some of those questions okay so what is an enterprise hub so it's a bit like a business incubator and i'm not sure if you're familiar with what that is but a business incubator is a company that helps new and startup companies to develop by providing services such as management and training or office space Right. Um, there's quite there's quite a few incub incubators, for example, in like Silicon Valley and many startups have, have kind of been brought about um, in incubator type spaces. But in terms of the enterprise hub, it's I, I only share that definition just so we can kind of get an idea of the enterprise hub, which really is a bit broader than an incubator. Um, but I would define the enterprise hub as an environment that helps citizens with new ideas, startup companies, and entrepreneurs to develop by providing services such as resources, training, connections, or space for work 
and collaboration. So let me just repeat that again. So the Enterprise Hub is an environment that helps citizens with new ideas, startup companies, and entrepreneurs to develop by providing services such as resources, training, connections, or space for work and collaboration. So why do we need enterprise? Now, often we think of, for example, if we were to say that we need a school, right? And we know that we, uh, you know, education is very important and even more so today because there's all kinds of conflicting ideologies being poured into children's minds from nursery all the way to university even. So now we might say, for example, okay, look, we need a school, right? We need our own school with our own values, or our own principles, or just we need a school, right? Now, the things that are needed in order to establish a school are things like, you know, space, you might need some teachers, um, some equipment, curriculum, resources, et cetera, et cetera. There's probably an endless list of things that you might need to establish a serious school, right? And the thing is, these things need money. These things require skills and resources to make happen. So as a result, we discover that we need enterprise because enterprise could be that engine to spark and feed a school, right? It could be the engine that produces even wealth to supply or to pay teachers or to buy equipment and et cetera, et cetera. So this is really how I want us to start thinking in terms of enterprise and initiatives, how we can solve real needs and problems that we have through enterprise. I hope that's all making sense to everybody. Okay. So following that previous example I just shared, I want us to see enterprise like we see mission. Often we do have a kind of dual way of thinking. So we think, okay, now I'm doing God's work here. You know, I'm praying and uh, we're fasting and worshiping, <laughs> you know. Uh, and then here I'm going to work, you know. Here it's like, oh man, I'm not really doing God's work here. I'm just like maybe making money or something. And here is God's work. So I want us to kind of see the fusion. I want us to see the connection of how God's work is often resourced and initiatives are part of that work that we're called to do. I'm even thinking right now of, um, you know, there's that scripture that talks about Jesus's ministry and how um, there was a group of women that were funding it, you know, supporting him financially you know there's so often that we see things that we don't see what is also like resourcing the thing in the background as well um, i'm not saying that jesus was completely you know supported in that way but i'm just trying to say that enterprise is something that we should start seeing as part of uh, mission last year if you remember there was a presentation um about um the hospital in Edgar. so that was Edgar hospital um i'm not sure if anybody remembers that but um, it's basically a hospital that has created jobs massively in the area. It's, I think it's the, it's the biggest employer in, um, in, in that part of Nigeria. And um, also, it's, it's been a res as a result of the hospital, many souls have been saved physically and spiritually because it's a mission-based project. Um, and also, you can see this image here on the far right. This is a new complex being built um, just for nurse training like a nursing school type thing, right? So now all of this has been funded by a whole bunch of different people. Um, you, you might have heard of Dangote. He's one of the richest men in Africa or the richest even. You know, he supplied some of the bricks that helped to establish this hospital and, um, and a whole bunch of other people from the community. But I really wanted to highlight um, uh, one of the, the persons that was, that's heading up um, or that headed up the project in Edgar Hospital called Don. And, um, and his father, before him, established the first hospital, Don Campion. And um, anyway, Don, um, he runs a business, and his business is uh, private jets, private planes and stuff, and he's doing very well. And I think he's employing like about maybe 200 people or so, and it's based in the US. Now, he's taken lots of his uh, cash, lots of his resources, and that's what's helped to power, right, lots of the innovation and lots of the things that were built and established in the community. So can you see how that's a very practical example of how business and enterprise and innovative thinking is creating a resource 
that's helping to change lives in a massive way and even transform a community. Another thing to point out is in 2021, and we're just in January, by the way, of 2021, and we've already seen the, the, the risk of leaving enterprise to others, you know, because in light of the US elections, right, and a whole bunch of conservative voices that have been, you know, doing well and creating new audiences and shaking things up <laughs> in the last uh, four years or so, you know, as soon as uh, the election came in, right, and, uh, uh, and they were trying to push Trump out as well, because, you know, there's all these allegations of if it's actually a genuine win, there might have been corruption and all this stuff. Well, anyway, what we've seen is big tech canceling people, right? Um, uh, closing down people's entire Twitter, Twitter accounts, Instagrams. Um, they shut down the president of the, U of the United States. They censored him, right? We're seeing censorship. And we're seeing censorship of a kind that is, is kind of, should I say is new? Well, it's becoming more prevalent, right? They're normalizing censorship based on ideological belief or based on political belief, right? And so we're seeing that lots of these business uh, big tech leaders have an ideology that's in some ways anti-Christ. And some of them are just simply anti maybe conservative or just over pro uh, super liberal agenda or something, I don't know. But the point is, these people have their own kind of ethics, their own kind of worldview. And rather than doing business with anybody, like a decent person, they're like, okay, you know what? We don't agree with the way you think, so you're shut, <laughs> right? And so we have situations where they can, uh, uh, they, like, for example, the president, for example, his all his socials were shut down. And then even banks got involved, right? Uh, Stripe, they were like, okay, we're not processing your money. And even last year, we saw that happen with, in, uh, with Barclays and um, Dr. Mike Davidson, right? Um, the LGBT lobby cam uh, campaign and pressurized Barclays, I believe it was. And before you know it, they closed down his business account and he was, they were like, we don't, want your, we don't want you, pretty much. Imagine a company that you're paying and is prospering from your money saying that they don't want you for ideological reasons. So basically, we're moving into this space where Business is so much entrenched with ideology and the social makeup and how things are moving and shaking that we cannot afford to leave this space just to, to heathens, basically, <laughs> right? To people who don't have standards um, or who have an a, a ideology or um, an agenda that works against Christ's agenda. So we need to infiltrate the business space. And there are already Christians doing great things in the business space, right? And creating innovation and technology and and et cetera, et cetera. So 22, if, if before you doubted um, the importance of us getting, getting involved in enterprise, I hope that January itself, January of 2021 has been a wake up call, <laughs> right? Look what happened to Parler, right? Lots of people moved on Twitter, they were like, this censorship is not great. So they moved to Parler, which is another um, social channel. Um, and then before you know it, uh, was it Amazon who were hosting Parler took them down? Yeah, Apple took them off their store. So it's just like, wow, you know, we need to start thinking of creating different platforms and different things. So let's get into what does the Bible say, right? We know that God is a creator himself. And I just want to pull out a few scriptures that um, highlight why we need to really get stuck in into enterprise. Now, the Bible has so many scriptures and things that we could explore but there's just a few maybe five or six points i want to pull out from from um, from scriptures i hope i'm clear and i hope you guys are following me yeah can i get a yes or an amen or something in the comments okay good stuff okay so um in acts chapter 4 verse 34 to 35 <laughs> it says um that there were no needy persons among them for from time to time those who owned land or houses sold them, brought the money from the sales and put it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. And so what we see in the book of Acts with the early ecclesia is, a, is commonwealth. You see a culture where every need was served. No one was too rich and no one was too poor, right? Needs were covered. And we had people that were selling their entire properties and selling the land just to ensure that the standard of citizenship was maintained amongst everybody, right? 
So there again, we can see how wealth and resource was being channeled uh, within the early um, Ecclesia. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 10, it says, So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are, who are of the household of faith. So I'm, I'm bringing this scripture here because I'm just trying to emphasize that we are to prioritize the body first, right? You know, you might be thinking, okay, let's, uh, you know, so, so many times we're so focused on outreach, right, that we, we forget in reach, right, and maintaining the standard within. There's enough needs in the house, <laughs> um, you know. So I'm just bringing this because uh, a, a big part of the enterprise hub is to ensure the standard is raised for everybody, right? Um, and the scripture does, does promote that, you know, family first. So Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18 says, But remember Yahweh, your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. I really love this scripture that it gives us reassurance that, look, God has given us gifts, he's given us talents, he's given us wealth. He's given you the ability to produce. Um, and on top of that, he's resourced you. So there's nothing that you're lacking, right? In, in Christ, you have all these blessings and all these benefits um, in him. But think about that, that when you've been given the power to make wealth, you might be thinking it's something that other people do. But look, it's part, have you thought of that, that the ability to produce wealth is also a gift of the Holy Spirit? given to you um, as, a, as a citizen in his house. So let's move to another scripture here. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse one says, for even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. So this highlights a culture amongst God's people. And it was a culture of productivity. Paul here is laying a standard and he's saying, look, if somebody's not working, yeah, then they should not be eating. <laughs> it's basically saying the normal default position is productivity in God's house. Because the thing is, you could also have lazy people, right? And that was, that was obviously creating a, a pressure on everybody in general and that community, right? And it's like, look, it should be a standard. It should be basic amongst you that you should all be productive right you can't just have the super productive people just you know and then you have other people that are just leaning on them right being lazy not because they can't work not because they don't have ability but just because they decided they're gonna um, i don't know watch a whole series of netflix for the whole whole year <laughs> right and enjoy passive income of other people's hard work so no it's it, work in the kingdom is a good thing work we don't even look forward to retirement because we don't plan to retire in the kingdom. You know, we were made to work from the beginning in God's vineyard. And, uh, and we don't have to see work as a curse because there's a work that happens after the, the fall. But before the fall, there was work. And uh, Fred covered a good session on that as well when we talked about work. So we need to completely change our mindset when we think about work and being productive. Right. I want to emphasize the word productivity because that is key to the enterprise hub and enterprise space. Okay, and I'll skip to the next verse. Okay, so in Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says, in all things, I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So I'm trying to emphasize here that we must be a generous people, right? We must be givers and we must be channels of resource. Every individual, um, as well as us as a corporate, you know, we must be channels of giving. And look at that, that scripture that says that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Why is it more blessed to give, to be a giver than to be a receiver? Because God is a giver. Think about it. There's nothing you can give God. <laughs> it's just like a, God is just like a giver. So to be a giver is to be like God because you, you are demonstrating uh, wealth of the highest order. You're demonstrating no lack. You're demonstrating that you are a supply for others, right? So this is why it's better 
to be a giver than a receiver. I think about it, to be a giver, you have to be in a position to have, right? So you can see again why it's, it's more blessed to, to give than uh, to receive. So we're participating in God's work by, um, by being channels of blessing, being channels of resource, being channels of wealth creation. And then Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but sinners' wealth is stored up for the righteous. So this is just me trying to emphasize that we need to think generationally, right? Uh, we need to think of institutions that are required, not just for us, but for the generation after us, and maybe their children and their children's children. Um, the righteous think in this way. We don't think in this kind of self-centered, me-only type of way, right? We're always thinking of, of, of God's praises and his legacy. Like it says in, in Psalm 145, you know, that I will praise you and the generations will speak of your kingdom, right? The next ones and the children's children will sing of God's praises. So we need to be thinking um, of now as well as in the future, right? We need to foresee the needs of the future or the issues of the future, and we need to supply and create resource for individuals and for families. Okay, so I hope that's been helpful in, in providing some, some just some scriptural backdrop. Um, so we all have access to wealth in communion with Christ. His wealth is seen through our creativity, our resourcefulness, our collaboration, and our generosity. So the Enterprise Hub, what's our beliefs, what's our mission, and what's our goals? So um, just pay attention to these parts here because this is really the essence of, of, of what the Enterprise Hub is about. So what we believe, we believe that all citizens are privileged with access to wealth and support. No one should lack when there's so much wealth. Some of the core values um, are listed here. So number one is, and when I say core values, I'm talking about this is how I want us to think in this space. These are the type of ways or mindsets that we need to embrace or cultivate within the enterprise space. So we want to cultivate entrepreneurial mindset, right? That way of thinking and problem solving. Um, we want it to be a space where there's lots of sharing, sharing of your wealth and your resource. And wealth, by the way, is, is bigger than cash. It's also um, knowledge, time, resource, access, all kinds of things. Um, and then also empowering as well. So this space is about uh, um, empowering you through unusual access. So when I say unusual access, I'm talking about, for example, you know, somebody might be like, oh, I wish I went to or was able to go to this university to study so-and-so. Well, it would be great if you were able to connect with somebody um, through the Enterprise Hub that gave you access to something like that that other people might have to otherwise be paying tooth and nail or something or always struggle to even get onto or to know. And this can happen through some of our mentors and coaches, which I'll, I'll touch on. Um, and then also support through like-minded networks. So it's just an environment where you constantly feel supported because you're being surrounded by like-minded minded people that are you know, sharing and supporting one another. So our mission is to inspire and support kingdom citizens through networks, education, and resource sharing. The overall aim is to enhance the work of the kingdom. We want to see successful individuals, success, successful families, <laughs> I'm to say that word, successful families, and initiatives nationwide. Um, and starting with London, but nationwide, okay? And um, so now these are some of the goals that we have for 2021. Um, first of all, we want to grow our network. So we just want to increase the reach. We want to reach out to as many believers that are inter interested in enterprise um, and doing God's work and kingdom work and resourcing that. Um, so that would involve, you know, growing our social um, platforms and different touch points. Number two, we want to deliver at least uh, three conferences or meetups. Um, and these meetups will be designed to, again, equip people for business or startups or different kinds of things. We're going to evaluate the different needs that people have. 
Um, number three, you want to produce uh, produce an entry level course or program or booklets using crowdsourced knowledge, right? So we want to create some good package, well packaged kind of stuff that would be useful for people to use. And then number four, we want to recruit coaches, mentors, and ambassadors. And that, those can come from all kinds of people. You might be running your business, right? And so you have some skills or some thoughts or some experience that somebody else doesn't have, right? So your mentorship or your coaching could be a great benefit to, to other people. And then lastly, this might be more of a 2022 type of goal, but um, the plan is to also build an online resource pool. So that's basically an online kind of like a kingdom yellow pages, if you remember the yellow pages, where it's like a business directory, right, of, 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 um, of believers. You know, like last year, we had lots of this kind of uh, black businesses because of BLM and all that kind of stuff, right? So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, let's do, let's work, you know, black on black, and black, 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 everything became a bit, a bit too black <laughs> in 2020. But you know what? We need to be thinking of our economy as kingdom citizens, right? And so that is an important part of the project uh, moving towards the end of next year, building that resource pool um, of stuff, of good stuff. So what's in it for you or what's in it for us? How will this, this uh, space be of help to you? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to use like three personas as a kind of, rough example of how this practically can work out for this type of person. So this guy here, we're going to call him uh, Wally. Um, he's an expert with some startup ideas. So he's working, he's, he's got some kind of expertise, but he's got some ideas for starting a business or something or initiative or something. He's got some ideas. So one of the things he would benefit from, uh, from working within the enterprise space is access. He would be able to get access to crowdsource uh, crowdsourced resources. Um, he would be able to meet like-minded people in his network. He would be able to receive support to turn ideas into reality. Or maybe um, you're Louise, right? And Louise, um, she wants to improve her career prospects. And she also wants a better work-life balance, right? Um, now, she could benefit from upskilling and this would serve her in the enterprise space because she'd be able to explore new opportunities. She'd be able to benefit from expertise of other people, right, to boost her personal career. <clears throat> um, and she'd be able to also gain from educational resources. Or you might be a Piers, right? And Piers, he's an entrepreneur. He's got his business or businesses happening and he's looking for ways to give back to kingdom-based initiatives. So he would benefit from the opportunities that will abound in the enterprise hub. Um, would, the opportunities to connect with um, other businesses and contacts. Um, he could also become a coach. He could be a mentor and he can share some of his knowledge. And on top of that, he can also fund initiatives that benefit other citizens. So I hope that that's been a helpful kind of guidance to show you how this space um, can work and, and maybe it can help you also visualize how, you know, how you can fit into the space, you know, what's in it for you and for us and how we will benefit from this space. So in summary, you know, the Enterprise Hub will have networks and meetups. There will be a resource pool. There will be um, great educational material. There will be mentors and coaching. There will be a space for collaboration sharing and support, and even funding of initiatives. All these things obviously are going to be built out over time as well. So if you visit restorecitizenship.net and you were to click on the Enterprise Hub, um, there are kind of three subspaces. So the workspace is really kind of like our public facing space. So for example, when we have a meetup or, or conference or, or any kind of meeting basically, this is probably the space that we would use the most to collaborate or to meet up and talk and stuff. And then we're going to also have coaching rooms. So this is where you can receive one-on-one uh, -on -one type of coaching or, I don't know, or group-to-one type of coaching. And then we also have a space that we're calling the mastermind. And these for like those who are really dedicated and want to collaborate and support each other and make things happen. So, so those are the three spaces that you can find 
So now the core thing now I'd like for you to, to consider is I want you to consider if this is right for you, right? If you want to join the Enterprise Hub and if you can support and how you can support. So what I've done here is I've written down some very many kind of job descriptions <laughs> of stuff and things that are needed. Um, and some are more urgent than others. So for example, we need some social media manager or management or marketing. So if you have any skills in that area or you want to simply just learn, right? This area or, and you're just willing, right? That would be great. So this person would be helping to manage the platforms and to help to grow the audiences. We need researchers. Researchers are actually very important because they'll help to gather the kind of content that we can also use to feed the community, right? like really valuable stuff. There's so many like really rich and good stuff out there, but sometimes it's hard to have it consolidated, right? So the researcher really would be somebody who would um, be scanning the interweb to get lots of stuff or speaking to different people so we can package stuff and feed it back to our growing audience. Um, then we need an event planner because we're gonna have several events and that's like, you know, the managing of events, guests, logistics, and all that's involved. We need a designer. Um, <clears throat> and that would be somebody who would be creating like the branded materials, um, the adverts. So any event that we have, obviously we need to be able to promote it and we need that collateral, that stuff to be created. Um, and then also we need project management. Um, that's currently me pretty much, I think. Um, but that's to make sure things are being resourced and things are being delivered on time. Um, and then also we need um, coaches and mentors, which I've talked about. So that's like a, a whole bunch of business people and people that we're reaching out to who would have the experience and are able to maybe teach or pass on or support individuals who might have um, ideas and stuff, right? Okay, and then um, finally, we need a coordinator. Um, by the way, I'm collaborating with Jockey. So Jockey is basically coordinating um, in this space. And they're gonna be the bridge between like, uh, mentors and coaches, um, ensuring standards are maintained, um, basically the lifeline, making things really happen, right? Um, so yeah, so think about the enterprise hub and the enterprise space, and if it's something that speaks to you, um, then I think, yeah, get in touch, and let's see what we can do together. So let's make the kingdom economy great again. <laughs>